Hey everyone, it's Joe Grotesque, and yes, I'm finally back after some months of being on hiatus. Uh, I know it seems like there's a lot of time in between when I make videos these days, but this time around is for a very somber reason, and I'd rather not talk about that right now, maybe in a future video, because I want to use this opportunity to lift spirits and talk about something we all love, and that's toys, right? Uh, why else would you be watching this if you didn't love toys? Uh, with this whole COVID-19 thing going around and everyone being forced to stay at home uh, for the betterment of mankind, uh, there's really no good reason for me not to make a video, and uh, so that's what I'm doing. So during this most recent hiatus <laughs> that's uh, stretched over some months, uh, I have acquired some pretty excellent toys. Some of these you've maybe never heard of. and. Uh, so instead of me just kind of jibber jabbering on, let's uh, get right into it. Well, do we have a treat for you? Pardon my pronunciation, it may be incorrect, but these are Invincibles Del Ring. And these are from Original Toys. They're made in Macau. Now, these guys are marked with 1985 on the, the back of the figure but I've read some stuff that these guys actually came out in the 90s, so I'm not exactly sure what's true. None of these guys have names, so we're just going to make some up for them. This uh, blue guy here, as you see, his helmet does come off, which is pretty much the only real feature to these toys. And uh, he's a handsome fellow. We'll call him Chet. Now, Chet's got some pretty nice articulation, even though the construction of this figure is a little loose. He bends at the uh, shoulder joints and the elbows on both sides. As you can see, he's got this little spot here, and that's usually where a sticker would go on the uh, Super Ninja Invisible Warrior figures, which is made by the same people. Look at that rear end. And th this is pretty much the uh, basic form of every single figure, their mask and paint deco being the only differences. Now this uh, orange masked guy, we'll call him uh, Brevard. And he looks identical to Chet, as well as the other guys. And, uh, yeah. And we'll call this guy Inferno, because he's got flames on his mask. And once again, he's exactly the same as uh, the other two. And this pink guy, I guess we'll just call him Pinky. And uh, he's even got some of the pink paint stuck to the side of his face. But uh, otherwise, he's on par with the other fellas. Moving right along, here's a toy from a toy line I've covered before, Trash Head Spitballs. Now these guys were made by Lennard Toys in 1986, and this is one I was able to acquire in the package. Now that package has seen better days, but here's a few of the other guys that uh, you can pick up. Uh, this guy is called Stoned Steve. Now how many of you out there know a guy named Stone Steve? I know at least one. And uh, there's the back of the package showing you how it's a squirt ball. It's obviously Garbage Pill Kids meshed with Mad Balls, which makes it pretty fantastic in my book. Now these are Sumo Giants from Arco Toys in 1986. Now I vaguely remember these guys as a little kid. These two guys right here are two of the three of the series which I believe are accidentally misnamed. Uh, this guy is Kamasubi, Jack the Crusher. And look at that behind. Quite fine. And they have articulation of the arms and legs and a, a little bit of the head, but it's very, very tight. Now, the reason I say these guys were misnamed because the other guy over here is marked as the Ozeki, but he's wearing the uh, Yokozuna belt, which is pretty obvious it's the Yokozuna belt if you know anything about sumo wrestling. Uh, but he is titled Ozeki the Butcher. 
And there's one more guy that is uh, titled Yokozuna. These guys are going to fight it out, and we have a winner. Now, you know I love me some mad scientists. Now, this is Mattel's line from 1987 that I just couldn't get enough of. This was on par with the Mad Balls, Garbage Pail Kids, everything else in the gross-out era for me. This is just a, a single, posable, bendable figure. He comes with this little monster, and... Uh, I always wanted this particular one when I was a kid, but I had the one that was in the uh, lab coat instead, which you see on the back here. So it's really awesome to finally have this guy in package. The packages could be in better shape, but it's not in terrible shape, so I'm thankful for that. And last but definitely not least, is the Shonen Henshin Cyborg. Now, if you don't know anything about Henshin Cyborg in general, watch the Netflix series, The Toys That Made Us, uh, on the Transformers. It will give you a lot of insight on this guy and how this guy connects G.I. Joe to the Transformers. It's pretty awesome. Now, these guys are incredibly expensive if you run across them. They're very rare here in the States, well, because, you know, they were made in Japan. But it's super, super cool. The whole translucent motif going on with the cyborg innards and the fact that you can buy really cool Japanese superhero costumes for these guys. There's even one for Ultraman and uh, Kamen Rider, things like that. And uh, there's some other really cool characters you can get in this line, but they're even harder to find. It took me forever to get one of these, and boy, did I pay top dollar for them. So good luck to you on finding one and uh, finding one for a good deal. Well, I hope you saw a few things in that mix that maybe piqued your interest or inspired you to go on an eBay toy hunt, which is about what we're limited to now, right? Uh, regardless, I hope you enjoyed it. Stick around. I've got more videos coming. Take care.